Though Doc helped aid and the prisoners escape, Wyatt remained trapped in the grow house. When Sarah ran in to look for him, the consequences of storing the seal oil were finally revealed. The fire spread to the oil, causing an explosion, and Sarah lost her life in the blaze. Meanwhile, Kate and her hunters discovered that the herd had thawed and was advancing on the village. The community bid to still try to complete the plan instead of warning the village of the approaching herd. The noise from the small explosion wasn't enough to turn the tide of the herd, however, and the walkers descended on an unprepared and unworn village. The only remaining option was to sneak through the herd and to try and warn Prosper Landing. The community chose to leave the two-way radio with River, and that choice saved Kate's life. All was silent as she crept through the herd, smeared in walker guts, and she made it through unscathed. Back in the village, community suspicion fell on Marlena as the culprit who started the fire. Though Marlena denied it, she did hand over her gun to Tasik while the accusation was being investigated. In the wake of the fire, Abe was uncertain of who he could trust, so he decided to leave the village and head for the plant. Let's get past the wall. We'll be safe in the woods. With Abe gone, the community decided the village would look to Remy for leadership, and Remy was gratified to finally be granted his due. Marlena, though, walked away from her duties to defense, choosing instead to watch the burned and injured Wyatt, determined to get answers and justice for Dylan. At the plant, a frantic Lottie wanted to know what had happened to Sarah and Wyatt after they left the village. Tara was unconcerned, certain they were safe in the village with Abe. But after Lottie learned that Tara had been the one to get rid of the dogs, Lottie's faith in Tara was badly shaken. Lottie made plans to leave and check on Wyatt herself, but the community voted to tell Tara of those plans, and Tara stopped her from sneaking off. To keep her safe, Tara locked Lottie in the back of the break room, but the community didn't approve and voted to speak with Tara about her choices. When the plant workers approached Tara, however, Tara reminded them that Lottie was the key to the success of the plant, and it was imperative they keep her safe. Meanwhile, Abe and the others escaped the village and were headed to the plant. Doc and the very sick Joe were slowing the group down, and when it was clear Joe could go no further, Doc decided to stay behind and care for his patients. The players voted, and Abe decided to take the rest of the group on to safety. The group was set upon by walkers, and Abe was heartbroken to see that one of them was Doc. Abe was ready to end his old friend's suffering, but a moment of distraction allowed Doc to bite him first. Rather than amputate and risk shock or unconsciousness, Abe chose to lead the rest of the survivors to the plant, knowing that the bite would kill him without treatment. Meanwhile, Wyatt woke up burned and in pain, with Marlena hovering over him. Though at first she was short with him, Wyatt's compassion and honest grief over Dylan's loss began to soften her. By this point, the herd had surrounded the village, and after initially feeling confident, Remy and the other defenders realized that they weren't going to be able to keep the herd out. Despite a desperate last stand, the wall fell, allowing the walkers to flood into the village. With walkers inside the walls, Marlena, Wyatt, and another injured villager, Javi, knew it was only a matter of time before they had to fight. The community chose for Marlena to have them all fight together, and everyone got a weapon. When the walkers did break in, Wyatt managed to distract them long enough to allow Marlena to kill them. while Javi shut and barricaded the door. Abe arrived at the plant with his few survivors, but it was too late to save him. As he slowly succumbed to his bite, he begged Tara and Lottie to start the plant, hoping the loud noise would draw off enough walkers to allow at least some of the villagers to escape the herd. Before he could convince Tara to agree, Abe died, and a grieving Tara shot him to stop him from rising. Back in the village, Tasik and a few others managed to barricade themselves in the community center. Tasik wanted to come up with a plan to help everyone escape the village, but Remy was looking out for himself. He wanted to escape on his own while Tasik and the others staged a rescue. But the community voted to drag him along with the rest of the group. A brave fighter sacrificed himself to distract the walkers and fire off a flare, and it worked long enough for Tasik, Remy, and the others to escape. Lottie, Tara, and the others saw the flare from the plant and knew it was now or never. They need us, Tara. You know we can help them. Lottie declared her intent to start the plant, and as voted by the community, Tara agreed that they had to try despite the risk. 
When Lottie realized they had to turn up the volume, she chose to make the ultimate sacrifice. Since the community had voted against repairing the igniter in Act 1, there was no safe way to light the flare stack now. Lottie climbed the stack and manually fired it, incinerating herself even as she set off a roar that would draw every walker. Though the plant workers had done their best, the old plant couldn't handle being fully ignited. A blowback into the compressor room caused an explosion and the entire plant went up in flames. Because the community had voted to create an oil barrier to light in case of a walker attack, Tara found herself caught in a ring of fire and couldn't escape the plant. The plant's sacrifice was not in vain, as its devastation created a distraction that allowed some of the survivors to evade the herd and make their way north to the pipeline. I don't know about you, but I'm going north to wherever this goes. You'll die up there, all on your own, kid. Then come with me. As our four-month journey concludes, let's look back at exactly who lived and who died based on your feedback. Lottie died because the community didn't make the long-term decision to repair the flare stack. Her sacrifice ultimately saved the rest of the survivors, but it forces her lover, Kate, to continue on alone. Sarah died rushing into the fire to save Wyatt, but the community voted to store the highly flammable seal oil, resulting in a devastating explosion. Sarah's love for her pack ultimately was her undoing. Kate lived because the community chose to leave the noisy radio with River, allowing her to sneak through the herd unscathed. Though grief-stricken with the loss of Lottie, she is given a chance to start anew. Doc, the joyful village healer, died because the community voted for Abe to leave him behind with a patient. His noble choice was made more tragic by the fact it led to Abe's death at the hands of his best friend. Marlena lived because the community voted to have her give weapons to Wyatt and Javi. Though her grief fueled her anger, she now has a chance to let go and seek redemption. Remy lived because the community voted to force him along on the escape. His story continues as he learns he needs to trust others to survive. And lastly, the leader of the plant workers, Tara, who died because the community voted to prepare an oil fire as a defense for the walkers. She almost made it, but recently was forced to shoot her ex-husband Abe as he turned into a walker, and ultimately she saw her demise with the plant she fought so hard for. <laughs> I'm, I'm crying because we killed so many. But at least Wyatt, Tasik, Kate, Marlena, and Remy live on as they travel north to the pipeline. One thing is for certain, their stories couldn't have been told without you. Your choices have given them a future, and who knows where we'll see them all again. Thank you one and all for helping to shape the Walking Dead canon.